Hi, I'm Sean from Big Rep, and we're here with Lindsay Lawson, Big Rep Senior Project Manager, to talk a little bit about post-processing in additive manufacturing. So what different kinds of post-processing are there? Um, there's three main categories, additive, subtractive, and um, material changing. So additive is simply adding something on top of the surface. Um, this could be a spray coating, for example. Subtractive is removing part of the print. So this would be um, like sanding, tumbling. And then material changing um, rather uh, changes the surface quality without adding or subtracting. Lindsay, what are the benefits of post-processing a printed part? Um, I would say that one of the biggest questions we get about post-processing is about smoothing the surface of prints. Um, inherent to FDM printing are uh, layers, mm -hmm. and they are, or any kind of printing really, especially because the size of big rep printers, mm -hmm. you tend to use higher layer heights. Um, these are bigger prints. And when you do this, uh, you can speed up your printing process. So for example, if you double your layer height, you're going to print in half the time, but you're going to have uh, twice the size of this, of this layer, which makes it more visible somehow. And so the interesting thing about uh, post-processing is you can perhaps do a faster print that looks rougher when it comes out of the printer, but depending on the process you use to post-process it, that could be a very quick um, process hmm. in the end. So that's just one example. Um, of course, you can also uh, strengthen parts and smooth them at the same time. Uh, you can coat them in materials that have some other kind of function, something that's conductive, for example, um, or waterproofing, weatherproofing, things like that. So it really depends on what the part is for. But uh, like I said, the biggest question we typically get is about smoothing. And it's an interesting way to, um, yeah, to get your prints out faster. So Lindsay, for a given part, how would you choose which kind of post-processing is right for you? It's a good question. Um, that would depend a lot on the geometry of the part. So for example, if you are trying to post-process this part and it's important to you that the inside is smooth, mm -hmm. then you're going to need a process that can reach the inside and treat it in a way that's consistent and uniform. Um, so geometry plays a huge role. Um, then you also have the question of what do you actually need this finished part to, to be like? How smooth does it need to be? Mm -hmm. um, does it need to have some other um, mechanical properties? Does it need to be stronger? Um, for example, if you want to make a part stronger, I mean, aside from anything additive will usually make your part stronger because you're adding other, another coating. Mm -hmm. um, so you have that question. Also, do you want it to be conductive? Does it need to have a certain color? or a certain look to it, aesthetic properties, all this. Um, so it's, I mean, each, each process has its uh, pros and cons, and it just depends on, on what you need. But the biggest determining factor, I would say first, is, is the geometry. Is it even possible to do with a certain geometry? So when you were doing this post-processing research and experimenting with all of these different kinds of post-processing, what was something really interesting that you found out? Um, I'm a big fan of, of coatings in general, um, spray coatings, and there's so many materials that are now being developed specifically for 3D prints that you can get some really great results. You can do something as simple in DIY as these like little uh, samples here that these were just done by hand, they were really quick. So this print was filled with a common household uh, wall filler and then sanded by hand and then spray painted with a really basic uh, just household spray paint. Um, took me maybe a couple of hours altogether to do, and it's not perfect, but for um, very little money, a little bit of effort, it's much better than it was when it came out of the printer, and I was able to give it this color. This one here is a, is, is a brushed on two component resin. Mm -hmm that's been applied and it's specially formulated for 3D printing and the, the thing that's special about it because any resin will adhere to practically any printed material in theory um, but the thing that's interesting about this resin is that it's uh, this viscosity is such that you can brush it on and it won't drip so much that it just falls off the part 
but it's uh, thick enough that um, the, the brush marks kind of uh, smooth themselves out. So it takes about an hour to cure, which is nice. So any kind of two component resin that, that has this sort of nice sweet spot of viscosity um, that, that will smooth itself but not drip too much and isn't too thin is also a really great solution. And it's, it's simple to apply. I just, I just brushed it on and waited an hour. So, so that would be my go-to first for any uh, post-processing application is, could I apply some kind of coating? And if not, then you start to work with other options. Thanks for watching this episode of Big Rep Academy. Be sure to like and subscribe so you're the first to know every time we release a new video where you can learn a little bit more about additive manufacturing.